Okay, so let's see how well you can add fractions. Now this particular uh, video is really a uh, remake of a problem that I did a while back. Well, actually it wasn't too uh, far back, a few weeks ago. And uh, what I did is I had the wrong problem and then my video solution was a different problem. So that was uh, something that I felt pretty bad about and I took that video down. So if you happen to see that video, matter of fact, what I wanted to do was uh, this problem right here, seven over 120 plus one over 48. And uh, my uh, thumbnail or my problem was one over uh, 120 plus one over 48. So if you happen to see that video, I apologize. I do a lot of videos and from time to time, as careful as I am, uh, things uh, can kind of get away from me. So again, I apologize, but I really do want to uh, cover this problem. So let's take a look at it. We have seven over 120 plus one over 48. All right, so without using a calculator, let's see if you know what to do to add these fractions. Now, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm gonna show you the correct solution in just one second. Then of course, I'm gonna solve this problem step by step. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct uh, solution here is 19 over 240. All right, now, if you got that right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A plus. And if you're like uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, I'm not sure what's going on. Well, you're probably having a tough time with the LCD, the lowest common denominator, because when we are adding or subtracting fractions, these uh, parts of the fractions, these bottom numbers down here called the denominators, uh, must be the same. All right, so let's go ahead and get into how to uh, add these fractions right now. Okay, so seven over uh, 120 plus one over uh, 48, here's the deal. These denominators, right, this is called the denominator, these bottom numbers, right, this is the numerator, this is the denominator, this is the numerator, this is the denominator. In order to add or subtract fractions, the denominators, these bottom numbers, have to be the same. So when I'm looking at uh, the situation, I'm like, well, these are not the same. It's not the same. I'm going to need to find the LCD. So yes, this is a situation where right off the bat, we're going to have to find the LCD. But let me show you an example here of a nice, lovely uh, math uh, problem, fraction problem, where you don't have to find the LCD. So not every single problem you know, requires the lowest common denominator. Uh, if the denominators are exactly common, like this right here, here is how you add fractions or subtract fractions. So you have 1 7th plus 3 7 Here, 7 and 7, these numbers, these denominators are the same, i.e. they are common. So all we have to do is just write that one denominator, and then we just go ahead and um, perform the respective operation for the numerator. So we're adding, so that's gonna be one plus three. That will be our numerator. So one plus three is four, so this will be four over seven. So again, this is nice and easy, uh, but guess what? Not every single math problem is gonna be nice and easy. You're gonna to have to deal with things like this as well. Now, here is the thing. When we're talking about the LCD, if I said, hey, uh, add one third plus one fifth, and I said, uh, what is the LCD? Now, most of you that are pretty good with fractions or remember this stuff pretty well, you might uh, say to yourself, uh, that's 15. And I would say, perfect, that's perfect. You are absolutely correct. But if I asked you, why is it 15 or what is the LCD? This is where, you know, a lot of students would be like, hmm, you know, I'm really not quite sure, you know, uh, what the, you know, why that is. I just knew that that was the answer. Okay. And of course I was the same way as well, but let's just break this down real quick. The LCD, okay, is effectively the lowest number that both of these numbers can go into, okay, without a remainder, right? So uh, 30, for example, uh, is divisible by five and third, uh, three, okay? So five and three can divide into 30 evenly, no problem. But is it the lowest number? No, the lowest number is 15. So that's kind of a, a, a conceptual way to think of what the LCD is. It's effectively the lowest common multiple between these uh, denominators. Now, how do we find the LCD? Well, that's a whole nother story, but we're gonna go ahead and get into that right now. Okay, so here's the deal, right? So we have seven over 120 plus one over 48. These are not common, so we're going to have to go get 
a common denominator, right? We're gonna have to get a common denominator and we're gonna want the lowest common denominator. So in that example with one third and one fifth, the denominator here, the denominators could be 30, okay? But this is not the lowest co uh, common denominator. 15 uh, was the lowest common denominator or is the lowest common denominator. So that's what we have to get. And so let's take a look at the formula for the lowest common denominator. So here it is, and this will make better sense when you actually see this in action. So the lowest common denominator is a product of all the prime factors of these two respective denominators. So we're gonna have to prime factor, okay, factor the this denominator or this number and this number, and we're gonna have to get a whole list of the respective prime factors, and then we're gonna take all the unique prime factors and multiply them together. That's how you find the LCD. Let me show you a quick example of this. One third plus one fifth, okay? So here, the LCD is what? Well, the LCD would be all the prime factors. So what are the factors of three? Well, it's only one and three. We never really count one as a prime number. It is a prime number, but so here, the only prime factors is one and three, so we're gonna need a three as a prime factor. And here, this number, this is just gonna be one and five, so it's gonna be three times five, which is 15. Look at that, that's exactly how you get the LCD. So this is what we're gonna, what we're gonna have to do. We're gonna have to prime factor each of these things, and this is gonna be a bit of uh, work. If you're familiar with a factor tree, um, and if you want to say, you know, I think I know enough now to do the rest of this problem, pause the video and finish it out. Okay, see if you can do it. But let me go ahead and show you the work right now. Okay, so I didn't say that this wouldn't require some, you know, amount of work involved. Uh, but don't be too, diff uh, you know, uh, scared of it, you know, right? That's just part of the nature of mathematics. All right, so let's uh, take a look at 120 and 48. All right, we're focusing on the denominators and we're gonna to have to create a lovely factor tree. All right, so what does a factor tree look like? Let's go ahead and focus our attention over here on 120, uh, then I'll talk about this 40 here in a second. But a factor tree is, we wanna break down this number, okay, into its uh, prime factors. So what you do is you just start factoring this in some easy manner, right? So like, for example, uh, 120, I know is 12 times 10. I just know that. It's also 60 times two. There's different ways you can do this. You could put 60 times two. You could, uh, if you put 60 and two right here, instead of 12 and 10, what we're gonna wanna do is just put you uh, two factors, right? Don't try to factor multiple things. Don't be like, oh, that's gonna be 30 times two times another two. Just go two numbers at a time, two factors and this is what we course what we call a factor tree. Now the numbers uh, that you select, as long as they're um, correct, like 40 times three, your final answer will be the same. So don't be uh, too, you know, uh, particular like, oh, I gotta pick the perfect numbers. No, no, just start factoring this in a nice, easy way. Uh, we'll all get to the same final answer if you're doing this correctly. All right, so uh, one, uh, 120 is 12 times 10. That's a nice, easy way for me to factor this. So now let's look at 10 here, okay? We're looking at both of these numbers. Are these numbers prime? No, they are not prime. So a prime number, again, are, is numbers like this. One, three, uh, five, seven, right? Where uh, the number and one is the only factors, okay, of this number. So 10 and 12 are not prime factors. So I can continue to go further. So 10, I could break down as two times five. Okay, these are the factors, right? E, if I multiply this, I get back to 10. And two and five are prime numbers. So anytime you hit a prime factor, just circle it like so. All right, so here, this uh, kind of branch of the tree is done. So let's look at this 12. So 12 is the same thing as two times six, four times three, again, you'll get to the same place. So two is prime, six is not prime. So let's continue to factor as two times three, and these are prime, so two, two, three and two and five, i.e. two times two times three times two times five is 120. These are the prime factors. So let's go ahead and write this this way, okay? So 120 is equal to two times two times two. Let's put all the twos together right there, times three times five. All right, so now, of course, you know, I'm explaining this and whatnot. Uh, the actual work is much quicker, but I am kind of going nice and slow so you can really comprehend what's going on. But here's what you want to do. Anytime you have something you can write as a power, 
you need to do that. And I'll explain exactly why here in a second. So two times two times two is the same thing as two cubed, all right? So write two times two times two as two cubed. And then we have uh, times three times five. So if you had two threes here, three times three, you would write that as three squared, et cetera. So this is very important. And I'll explain again in a second. All right, so now let's go over here and take a look at 48 and prime factor this. So 48, I'm thinking, oh, eight times six. So I just continue to break it down and you can just kind of see my work here. There's all the prime factors of 48. So it's gonna be two times two times two times two times three. Okay, so here again is 48 and you can see I already have the work here done, but let's just continue to uh, take this one step at a time. So two times two times two, two times two times two times two, I had to get that extra two in there times three is two to the fourth times three, that's 48. And here for 120, I have two to the third power times uh, five, got to erase that here, uh, times three times five. Okay, so you can see the work. Now we are uh, kind of ready to go. Now, a lot of you are saying to yourself, that's a lot of work, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Hey, listen, I, again, I didn't say it wasn't gonna re require work, but we need to be precise. And the way I'm showing you how to uh, find the LCD is the way you need to do this stuff in algebra, okay? Believe me when I tell you, when you're dealing with fractions with variables and polynomials and trinomials and all kinds of good stuff like that, it's the same procedure, the same concept. And this um, is critical, right? Understanding what the LCD and how to find it is critical. All right, so let's go ahead and now build our LCD, our lowest common denominator. So these are all the prime factors, uh, two cubed, three, five, two to the fourth and a three over here. So we have to have all these prime factors represented uh, and we need to find the product of all these various prime factors. So let's just go ahead and just uh, take the easy ones here for a second. So five needs to be in our little club here. So we have to put a five right there. Now we have a three here and a three here. We don't need to put two threes, we just need one three. Uh, so we have to have a three and our little uh, product right there is a factor. Okay, so there's three, that takes care of that. So again, if you have a three here and a three there, or a five there, five, just you only need one representation of it. So that's how that works. Now, here is a very important point. Here is two cubed and two to the fourth. So the question would be, should I put two cubed and two to the fourth into um, you know, my LCD? No. You only put the highest power of this number. So we need uh, a power of two represented. So you always pick the highest power. So this course here is two to the fourth. And so that has to be uh, as part of our uh, product here, a factor of our product that creates our LCD. Okay, so two to the fourth is two times two times two times two. All of this is 16. Okay, so 16 times three times five or 16 times 15 is 240. That is the LCD. And I know a lot of you are like, boy, that's a lot of work. Well, listen, again, we aren't using our calculator, but you know, uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, it's, it might seem like a lot of work because I'm going slow uh, to really kind of explain this, but you know, just believe me, have faith, okay? That you can learn this through practice, you'll get better and better at finding the LCD. And we are dealing with numbers that are a little bit larger as well. Okay, so we got the lowest common denominator, it's 240, so what does this mean? Now, before we continue on, I have a quick question for you. Are you enjoying this content? Well, if you are, please consider hitting that subscribe button. This really does help me out on YouTube. And if you're gonna do that, hit that bell notification as well. I will definitely uh, appreciate that. Also, if you need additional help in math, check out my math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. Also, I'm gonna give you uh, some specific recommendations at the end of this video. All right, so let's get back to the problem. Well, here's our original uh, problem, seven over 120 plus one over 48. This means that we need to take this 120 and somehow write it as a 240. We need to take this 48 and rewrite that with 240 and the denominator. So you might be saying to yourself, well, how can we just rewrite fractions? Well, we do that all the time. If I said, hey, rewrite the fraction one half with a denominator of six in it, eh, no problem. It's just, I have to adjust the numerator. So that'd be three over six. 
If I said, hey, put uh, rewrite the fraction one half with a denominator of eight, no problem. I have to make the numerator four because all of these can be reduced down to this fraction, right? So you can rewrite fractions. You're not breaking them or changing the value, but you do have to adjust the numerator, and that's what we have to do right now. So let's go ahead and do this work right now. So here's 240, okay? So how do I get a 240? I have 120 right here, right? So how do I get a 120 to turn into a 240? Well, easy, if I just multiply 120 by two, okay, that will turn into a two, uh, uh, 240. Now, if you're not sure about this, just take this number and divide it by this, okay? So 240 divided by 120 is two. But if I take two and I multiply it by 120, I will get to a 240, but here's the deal. If you multiply the denominator by two, you have to now adjust the numerator by multipl uh, multiplying it by two as well, okay? So we're gonna multiply this seven by two and you'll see the answer here in a second. Let's go ahead and adjust this 48. How do we get a 48 to turn into a 240? Easy, we just multiply that by five. Now, if you weren't sure, just take the 240 divided by five, um, divided by 48 and you'll get five. So if I multiply uh, 48 by five, I will get 240. All right, so if I multiply 48 by five, I gotta multiply that numerator by five as well. All right, let's go ahead and finally, finally clean this up. So two times 120 is, of course, 240, and two times seven is 14, and then here I have 48 times five, which, of course, is 240, and five times one is five. Now, finally, 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 we have a fraction problem, a fraction addition problem, where the denominators are the same, so all we have to do is add the numerators, and uh, let's just go ahead and do that now, and I'll make one last quick comment once we finish this up. All right, so here is our problem. We finally did the work, so this is gonna be 240 over 14 plus five, which of course is 19, and that's 19 over 240. Okay, so I hope this video helped you out, and if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in basic math, check out these two courses right here. So the first is my Math Foundations course. This is a, a quick review of basic math. Now, if you want to review uh, basic math, algebra, and geometry, then check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. I'm going to leave uh, links to both of these courses in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.